The Law of Definite Proportions. All right. The Law of Definite Proportions tells us that matter, when it combines, it combines uh, the same way every time. Uh, water is not HO or H3O or H7O or HO9. It's always two hydrogens and one oxygen. That's its definite proportion. And we can use this law to help us make perfect recipes to make different compounds. So this is how you do it. Suppose a chemist wants to make um, calcium chloride. So he's going to take something, well, calcium, right? Not spelled very well, but all right, calcium. And let's say he takes 100 grams of it. And then chloride, part of calcium chloride is chlorine. The ending changes. So we're going to write chlorine. He's going to take 100 grams of that. And then he reacts it together and controls it so he knows what's making and what's coming off and all that kind of stuff. And he figures out that he has... 156.5 grams of calcium chloride. Now, do we know if that's all he has? Well, we know definitely that's not all of it because 100 plus 100 is 200, so we need to have 200 grams on the other side, don't we? That's a law of conservation of mass. So we're going to have something left over. And the chemist figures out that it's left over calcium. How much left over calcium does he have? That's step one of the equation. So, again, law of conservation mass tells us that we can add these two, and they should be the same as these two added together. So, 200.0 grams minus 156.5 grams is 43.5 so the calcium weighs 43.5 grams and again we can check that to make sure by adding the reactants adding the products, and they should equal each other. Alright, now, um, that could be one of the problems that we had. In fact, that's just like the problem that we had with the um, burning wood, the law of mass conservation. But we can go farther now. So, let's say that the um, chemist decides that he doesn't want to have any leftover calcium. That's kind of wasteful to weigh it all out and then not even need it. So he wants a perfect recipe for this so that there's no leftover calcium and everything is combined together to make calcium chloride. How much calcium would he need to start with? Well, obviously he has too much or else he wouldn't have any leftover. And how much too much? Well, we know that, 43.5. So all I need to do is take that 100 grams of calcium minus the 43.5 grams and I will get 56.5 grams. So instead of 100 grams of calcium to make the perfect recipe he should have 56.5 grams to start with. Now, notice that this doesn't change any of the grams of the chlorine we have. We need that much chlorine to react with that much calcium. And then together, they are going to add, and we can check and make sure that's right, 100 plus 56.5 is 156.5 with no leftovers. Now, 
we can even go a step farther in these problems. And we can say that 156.5 grams is kind of a weird number to make. Wouldn't it be better if we made something that was a little bit more round? Uh, let's say 100 grams. So how do I change my perfect recipe now to only come up with 100 grams of calcium chloride? Well, all you do is you make a proportion over the perfect recipe number over the new perfect recipe number and then let's say we're talking about chlorine and the old number for chlorine is 100 and I put it on top because my other my 156.5 my other old recipe number was on top also and here's my X because I don't know how much in my new recipe to make a hundred grams of calcium chloride I will need. So, do you remember how to solve a proportion? Anything across an equal sign you can cross multiply. So all we have to do is say a hundred times a hundred divided by 156.5. And X, which is the grams of chlorine, I really need to make 100 grams of calcium chlorine, is 63.90 grams. Now, I put how many significant figures on there? I put four. And why is that? Because multiplying and dividing, you count the number of significant figures, and all these have four, so my answer should have four. Now, I can go back up here and say that instead of 100 grams of chlorine, to make 100 grams of calcium chloride, I should only have 63.9. All right. Now, there are two ways to get the other number. I could do another proportion where I could take uh, use the law of mass conservation and subtract. So huh, let's do it the hard way because I'm a teacher and I like to do things the hard way, huh? <laughs> Maybe not, but there you go. And this is not actually too hard because it's the same proportion set for one number. This time I'm going to use the calcium's number for the new uh, perfect formula and cross multiply it. So 56.5 times 100 divided by 156.5 is 36.1. So that's how many grams of calcium I should start with to make 100 grams of calcium chloride. Now, I can check that by using the law of mass conservation. Say that I want to end up with 100 grams. Make sure I started with 100 grams. Perfect. And then before we leave this, one extra thing. Do you see how I put three significant digits on this number? Why is that? That's because although this number and this number had four, this number only had three. So I can only use the least amount of significant figures in my answer. So I'm left with 36.1. Alright, these problems are a little long, but they're actually not too complicated.